Welcome to the On Your Side podcast. I'm Gary Harper. And I'm Susan Campbell. Have you ever heard of an airline offering super cheap airfare to fly somewhere? But once you try to buy some of those affordable tickets, they're long gone. Well, it turns out there's a reason why those inexpensive tickets get gobbled up so fast. And it's not because some consumers are quicker to react to the airfare sale than others. Today on the On Your Side podcast, we are talking with Jesper Essendrop. He's the CEO of Qit, and he reveals the results of his investigation into how bots are making things even more difficult for travelers. This is On Your Side with Susan Campbell and Gary Harper, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast. Okay, welcome to the On Your Side podcast. I'm Gary Harper. And I'm Susan Campbell. And this is a big, we, we just passed a big day. Huge milestone. Huge, congr- congratulations, by the you way. You too. We do this together. I and, love we, it. And, and what is the milestone? Let's let's make the big announcement. So we have put up a hundred of these podcasts. We have posted a hundred of these podcasts. We've had a hundred conversations, a hundred really interesting conversations about a whole wide range of consumer issues yes. and concerns and fun things that consumers need to know about. Right. We've talked a bunch about some of your favorites. Oh man, we have covered real estate a couple of times because it's such a big thing. We got real estate, we covered retirement. How much do you need? Remember that one where a million dollars used to be like all you needed and now it's Ooh, certainly not, not enough. We've even covered wine. Like, wine. Like, you know, wine and weddings. Those are two of my favorites. Wine and weddings, working outs, traveling. They were all very, well, listen, I'm a little biased, but I thought they were all <laughs> educational. And we got a huge, a lot of feedback uh, on, on, on our podcast. And we certainly appreciate our, our listeners and our viewers as well, because we also put this on our newscast um, every Monday. Yeah, well. and our YouTube page. And our YouTube page, yeah. So people can see that you have your... Uh Texas Tech well, Cup every yeah, time. Yeah, what do you call that in the movies where uh, it's product placement? Prod- product placement. Yeah, I guess I'm kind of <laughs> guilty of that. You're right. Um, but you know, we mentioned traveling earlier, and we're kind of talking about traveling today. That's the topic, traveling. And interesting enough, okay, let's let me, let me go back. Like Ticketmaster, when you would buy concert tickets or at least try to, remember the problem that consumers would have with these bots gobbling up everything before, you know, me and you or the average Joe could get to Yeah, you can't get in. Apparently the same thing's going on in the airline industry. When they have like a big sale or something, you try to get on there. Oh, Southwest is having a big sale. Let's get on there. And, you know, it's $49 one way. And I've tried that before. And then womp womp. And and womp womp womp. It's not there. So there may be a reason behind that, and it's very aggravating because it's the same thing that happened to Ticketmaster is happening to the airlines. And it's a really good subject for our 101st podcast. 101. <laughs> Let's jump in. Let's jump in. So we're talking to Jesper Essendrop. He's the CEO of Qit, and you're joining us from Copenhagen, right? I do. Good to meet you, and, and congratulations on your anniversary. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a big day for us, so thank you for the uh, congratulations. Um, so tell us a little bit about Qit, very briefly, when it comes to these annoying bots. What's your company do with those bots? So here in Qit, we are uh, passionate about what we call online fairness. We serve the biggest brands around the world. More than a 1,000 customers use Qit to make sure that their customer journey are uh, designed to match you know big sales like a million of people coming into a web shop or an app to get a flash sale and they get a place in the virtual waiting room and, and get transparency on when it's their turn to get into the web shop so that everybody stays online and everything happens in a in a fair way and as part of that we make sure that the the bots are kicked out of the queue and that the real people are getting access to for instance buying an airline tickets uh, we also monitor websites around the world, and, and, and if an unexpected event happens or an outage happens suddenly on the system, the, the queue kicks in and, and capture those customers and make sure they can be back in the website as soon as it's available. And and lastly, we help with uh, loyal customers, so frequent flyer programs. How can you, for instance, uh, sell your reward tickets to your loyal customers in a fair and transparent manner without the bots getting access to that ahead of real people? So, so- that's basically what we do. Let me ask you a question. So uh, my wife and I, we mm-hmm. went to a concert last month, very popular one, and she had to get a code and then she used that code to get into a queue. And then she waited to be, uh, I guess, 
you know, hey, your number is up, here's your tickets. Is that is that the way that you eliminate the bots, the way I just explained it? So that, that is one way. There are multiple ways of eliminating the bots. Uh, we have, you know, uh, and a technology we serve 45,000 uh, visitors in our platform a minute. So if you multiply that, it's like uh, three times the world's population that are visiting the Cured platform uh, every uh, every year. So we know a lot about traffic patterns. So it's not only what you there described as part of the solution, but we have a lot of features and technology that look at patterns on that traffic coming into your website and see that, okay, these IP addresses is not okay, this pattern is not okay. So it's not just one feature, it's a lot of features. You know, uh, uh, fighting bots is a cat and mouse game. Uh, they improve the, the bots, then we improve the platform, then the, the bots improve, we improve our platform. So it's not something that are done like uh, then you have a, a fully uh, safe system. You keep fighting bots all the time. Well, how so big of a, multiple ways of doing it. Yeah. How big of a problem are bots? I mean, w give us the quick overview of why these bots are created, what they're actually trying to do. It's not just to annoy the person who's trying to buy a ticket. No. So if you look at the airline industry, we serve some of the global airlines in, in, in the world. Uh, and after the pandemic, I think it's fair to say that we are, we are all back in airlines again, and maybe even faster that we all believed, and maybe also when the airline believed. So we have a lot of uh, 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 people that want to go uh, with the airline and a limited supply. Uh, and that attracts the bots, because then you have the opportunity to resell a ticket or make a reservation of, uh, uh, ahead of real people and then make some money on it. But bots are here in the game to kind of earn some money, uh, get a profit out of what they are doing. The same as uh, buying tickets for a concert ahead of real people and resell on a secondary market or buying sneakers on a website and buy and sell it on a secondary market. Exactly the same. The bots are attracted to areas where they can make a profit. It's a business uh, to try to, uh, to get ahead, ahead of real people. How do bots work? So bots is basically a computer program designed to act like a like a human being shopping online, whether that is airline tickets or scraping the website and in and, and that way to get prices and discounts and so forth and, and disturb the, uh, the, the, the website and, and generating a lot of traffic so that people cannot get into the website. But basically a, a bot is just a computer program that are designed to act like a like a human being shopping online. Um, wow. Yeah. Your company has done a lot of research on this. I mean, you're fighting the bots every day for companies that want to ensure that their customers have a good experience, but you've also done a lot of research. What have you found um, about bots and how they work and how they interact in this global marketplace right now? So, so what we have seen in, in the airline industry, for instance, if we look at across our, com uh, our customers and look at how much traffic that comes into their flash sales, so when they have seasonal tickets for sale, and all customers want to come in, uh, you know, uh, less than half is real people. Uh, and what is then the rest? The rest is then bad actors or bots that are disturbing the traffic, getting ahead of real people. So that are the magnitude of the, uh, the it's not one or two visitors, it's really uh, only half of the visitors coming into those websites that are real human beings trying to buy tickets. So that is the scale of what we are we are looking at. And we see that in other industries as well. Uh, sneaker industry is maybe where it's uh, the, the biggest issue where, where a lot of uh, bots trying to buy sneakers ahead of real people and resell. So uh, it's, it's a huge problem from the whole digitalization industry. You know, back in the days, it was easy. We queued up in front of a store uh, and maybe 150 people were queuing up ahead of a, a store selling a new iPhone or whatever. And everybody had a place in the queue and they were into the shop one by one. Now in a digital world, it's the same but it's millions of people that have access to the same web shop and can go into the same web shop at the same time. So the problem just gets so much bigger. And how do we create in a digital world where there is no physical line to control what is going on? How do we make sure that that happens in a fair way, uh, that, that people don't jump the queue, that there's no bots ahead of you? That is what we're trying to solve, making sure in these high volumes with millions of visitors coming into a website, how can we create transparency and fairness for the uh, for the end customers uh, and in the end also help our customers to serve their loyal customers instead of bots. Hey, Jesper, so uh, that, your research recently indicated that airline websites saw a spike of up to six and a half million bot visits in just a matter of yeah. minutes. That's a significant number. Yeah. 
Um, I'm wondering if that's the case, what do these bots or the people behind the bots, what do they do with these airline tickets then? I mean, if you're reselling a sneaker, that's one thing, but can you really resell an airline ticket? I'm not, you know, completely uh, sure how that ecosystem works of reselling airline tickets and so forth. But for sure, we can see that a lot of bots are trying to get in to make reservations, get ahead of people on reward tickets. Uh, and yeah, it is possible on the secondary market to buy uh, airline tickets and then rename them into your name for a fee. But if you know, if you uh, if you the end get a cheaper flight ticket out of it or get access to that flight you would like to get. There is for sure uh, uh, a secondary market also for flight tickets. I'm just curious, why do we call them bots? It's a funny question, but why? Why bots? I do we know? We call them bots because it's, it's it's an automated process. So it's a robot uh, or it's a bot. Uh, so, so I think that, that that's that's why we call them bots. It's, it's something that are automated to act like a human being online. And I know companies uh, use other companies like yours, for instance, Qit to kind of eliminate these bots. Um, as a consumer, I guess there's nothing we can really do to jump ahead in line ahead of bots, is there? Unless we uh, pay a company like yours. No, well, 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 yeah, of course, if, if, if you're screwed, problem solved. <laughs> no, the, the, the joke aside, for, the, for our customers, I think we, we always advise, advise them that, you know, an airline company needs to take their digital customer experience serious and they need to have a multi-layered approach. So we always advise them to have multiple tools in the ETA IT infrastructure to protect against uh, tools, uh, sorry, sorry, to protect against bust, like our tool or other uh, tools in combination. You cannot fight bots with only one tool. Um, and for the end customer that you ask about, what, what can the consumer do? Uh, and I think the consumer can do a proper due diligence, uh, um, look for an airline company uh, uh, that looks, uh, have a good uh, digital customer journey. Uh, do not go into an airline company where the website is constantly out of service or uh, that is a signal of being bought so you can you can look for serious airline companies and not some secondary websites to buy your airline tickets you can join the frequent flyer programs if you join the frequent flyer programs you are a registered user and to shop when you log in you eliminate not completely eliminate but at least make it less easy for bots to get ahead of you so there are something that that consumers can do to uh, to uh, to make sure how they they pay like when you walk down the street you also look at the different shops and you you select the shops that look like they have a proper proper inventory you can do the same thing online do a proper due diligence is still possible in the digital world we talked about uh airlines and and shoes are there any other industries where you're seeing bots be you know a little bit more significant or make more of an impact I think they, they're all over the, the, the retail world, I would say, uh, in any fashion goods. We see that all over the industry uh, in pandemic. Uh, uh, we were all sitting at home, bored, uh, and then suddenly everybody was acquiring outdoor hot tops. And then suddenly that was the big topic, and there was a lot of money earned by buying hot, hot tops ahead of real people and selling them. So I think in the retail industry, sneakers, uh, ticketing in particular is, of course, also an issue to get ahead of real people and get those there's only 20,000 seats for a football game so so people want to get ahead uh, and get a seat so everywhere online where it's a limited supply and a huge demand you will see bots go in and try to make money out of it i think that was a pretty illustrative example that he just brought up earlier about people lining up outside of a store remember years ago people would line up outside of best buy yeah. for the best electronics people would camp out yes. there for up to a week and that gives you a visual of what the queue is now now yeah. you really don't have to do that physically but now you have to do that digitally yeah. you have to get in line digitally and and hopefully you're high up on the queue you should have seen our newsroom the morning i know you you start a little bit later in the day than i do mm -hmm. uh the morning that the taylor swift uh tickets yeah. went on sale every single person in our newsroom was in a queue ready to go waiting for those pre-sale tickets oh my gosh and that's when it crashed and we knew immediately oh gosh something went wrong yeah. here right yeah we're in the news and now we know oh now we're yeah, part of the we news see. because now <laughs> we know what happened but it, but i mean that's how everybody's waiting they had you know they had the time set on right. their phone like to remind them okay log in right this second right. here's what you need to do yeah the only reason we got the uh my wife and i got the concert tickets last 
month was because our friend was also in the queue, but our friend was higher up the queue than we were. So you just sent some money to so, them. You said buy four tickets instead of two. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. So And we got to go. So And you're a real person. I, the I, bot didn't win. The, the, I won. <laughs> I, I had control over the bot. You beat the bot. Um, all right. Hey, listen, Jesper, thanks for joining us on the On Your Side podcast. Really appreciate all the information. If people want to know more about you or Qit, is there a website or anything that you can pitch out there? Qit.com. You are more than welcome. Uh, so uh, just go to Qit.com. And, and, and thanks uh, again for having me. And uh, congratulations on your anniversary. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much. And we appreciate your time. This Take it easy. This is a really fun conversation. Thank you. The On Your Side podcast is produced by Brad Denny. Our audio engineer and editor is Todd Martin. Segment producer is Colin Stanton. And I'm Gary Harper. And I'm Susan Campbell. If you have a problem you can't resolve, maybe we can't, send us a message through azfamily.com or our AZ Family mobile app. Look for the On Your Side section and leave us a message. Thanks so much for listening to the On Your Side podcast. And if you like it, leave us a review. We'll see you next week. On Your Side is on Good Morning Arizona every weekday morning at 6.45 and 7 o'clock and every weekday evening on Good Evening Arizona at 4 and 5 o'clock. You can also catch it on Arizona's Family News at 9 on 3TV every weeknight.